Three persons have been confirmed dead following the outbreak of a disease suspected to be caused by contaminated water in Kano State. The Kano State Ministry of Health says at least 284 other people have been hospitalized since the disease broke out on Thursday. 101 of them have so far been discharged, leaving 183 still in hospital. The parents were said to have poured expired citric acid powder into the water they drank. 84 cartons of the expired products have now been seized. And medical doctor Tui Mebondo is joining us from Jalingo to take a look at this. Good morning, Mr. Mebondo. Good morning. All right, let's talk about this citric acid. It's something we find, you know, on shelves and shops. You know, people buy it, they use it to preserve food, you know, and all of that. Could you tell us some of the other uses of citric acid and why, you know, this expired product might have found its way uh, through our borders? Yeah, citric acid is used in so many food addictives and um, uh, juices. Um, and in preparing a lot of uh, food, uh, meat, and even adding to drinks. So it's an important component um, in food preparation, purely food that has been sold over the uh, counter and uh, in common shops. Now, we understand that there has been a lot of challenges in capacity the government to monitor food inflow production process um, and then pick a follow-up in the market and find out whether they have satisfied all the conditions for consumption so now to sit down and look at that scenario very well it must have been a serious laxity in the in this, on the side of the monitoring agency or that need to look at those food. Now, the question is that where is NAVDAC in this situation? Where is the standard organization in this situation? Where is the Ministry of Health? Where, where are the primary health care development agency that has to you know, follow up and look at um, all these things being consumed by people? All right. Um, so, uh, Dr. Tugi, all right, I, I, I think we would, of course, uh, bring back NAVDAC, you know, into the conversation. But I, I, I want, you know, from a medical perspective to share with us, you know, what are the, um, you know, effects of citric acid, acid poisoning? Uh, what are these people dealing with at a time like this? We hear that three people have been confirmed dead and uh, close to 200 of them, if not more, um, have been hospitalized. What are the effects, you know, that they are fighting currently? The, the, the greatest effect that it has is to poison the cells on the body. Because what happens is that when the citric acid is consumed, if there are problems with citric acid, the first reaction is at the stomach and the throat. Okay? Now, the body sensation that happens, then there's. The thing enters into the cells and causes a clear what we call acidosis. Okay? And acidosis blood system with actually cause death faster than anything you they may actually stool sometimes they may permit well but you know those are been and not the real thing that will cause death except with a massive injection of drugs but what happens is that the cystic acid poisoning the cells and lead to what they call acidotic condition where the blood system becomes acidic when the blood system becomes acidic the cells cannot function and then um, there's a process that goes on and leads to toxicity in the cells and dead cells death and then death. As, as a medical doctor, is the situation like this manageable? Does a, a patient who's dealing with citric acid poisoning, um, can the person, you know, always, is there a high percentage of uh, survival? Well, the, the first thing is to quickly recognize because what you do exactly is to do what you call a gastric virus and try to remove as much as possible of those acids from the stomach, okay? Whereby they pass the tube and suck out the content as much as you can do. 
The second level has to do with correcting the acidotic situation that may will happen with internal acidic acid. That means that there are specific fluids you have to put into the body, you have to check the function of the heart, you have to check the function of the kidney, because those are the organs that can get shut down quickly. So as you correct the acidosis and check the function of the heart and the kidney, perhaps if you have a facility for intensive care, you can save quite a number of people. So besides that, you know that our health system is compromised. We have challenges that we're going through. Before people even realize that the cystic poison, it might have been late. And, you know, and people might have been experiencing the severe symptoms of the, of the poison. All right, Mr. Mebaundu, you know, I, I'm so curious about this. I, you know, did a few research and what I found was that citric acid itself does not expire. So as a public health expert, could you enlighten us on how this poisoning and how this expiration might have happened? Well, when you have an expired product, well, what it means is that the toxicity might increase, uh, the stability might have problems, you know, it may produce undesired effects on the, on the body. Okay, that is why labeling is key. Um, so, citric acid can be used as stabilization agents even in terms of uh, uh, a lot of food additives. But when it has expired, um, I remember sometimes uh, in 1999, no, 1992, 1992, 1992, in Jaws, um, a particular, I was doing a use service, and a particular product was brought to the country. That was instead of LC glycol, they, they brought propyl glycol. I used to mix syrup for babies, and a lot of them the kidney packed up. Of course, the man who was in charge was sentenced, and he was the, 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 the company was closed down. So, you know, likewise, when you put the wrong chemical into food that it is people ingest it, you may have those kind of reaction kidney shutting down, acidotic states, and then the heart also undergoing some toxicity. So these, these are the things. Now, if the product is expired, of course that means it's not good for the body again. And of course we have to actually discuss those products. So but how, who is in charge of monitoring those products that are, that are expired and they put in the additive? What we need to do is to look at the People, the factory, I, I, I guess it was I've arrested some people that uh, people in charge of distributing those products or, or selling them. Yeah, there's obviously going to be, um, you know, investigation. Uh, NAVDAC, of course, will be brought in here. The police will be brought in. Um, but, you know, as that goes on, you know, what's also very important is that the lives of these persons are, you know, saved. And so, you know, you, you're currently in Jalingo, um, but can you give us an assessment of what the intensive care units in Kano um, are capable of? You know, do you think that they can handle this many cases? Uh, you know, is it likely that, you know, there's a high percentage of survival uh, for these people, you know, seeing what the health care is like in Kano State? Yes. Um, let's face it, the Kano intensive care system was just upgraded um, so, sequel to the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? And you also know that Kano, um, as a strategic city, despite being a strategic city, does not have requisite number of health workers that will man that um, intensive care. And you saw them decommissioning quite a number of those um, isolation centers so, but by and large, is to do a triaging. First and foremost, is to actually raise that alarm, which they have done. Uh, secondly, is to look for how to seize all the products in the factory that is responsible for those things. And then look for those products that are still circulating in the market and ensure that it's not sold again. Then, um, at the level of who that have serious injury, is to find a way to put them into the intensive care. And because, number one, if, if that country does not have more than maybe about uh, ICU, 50 or thereabouts, now, how many people can you treat with 50?
So that not all of them definitely will require intensive care um, treatment. What you have to do is what we call triaging. You look at the severity, uh, put people um, in care according to the severity. Some of them will have mild symptoms, maybe some vomiting, some swelling. Some will have difficulty in breathing a bit, which require correction of acidosis, uh, some IV fluid, some injections to neutralize the effect. Some may actually be very severe, uh, presenting in renal failure, in cardiac arrhythmic uh, experiences. So those all will require um, intensive care. Um, that is the way it is. But no matter of fact, can coping with COVID, can coping with other diseases, and then now you're having massive food poisoning, you know that um, it's going to be a, a lot of load on the health system. Hmm. Mr. Meba Wondu, we're, we're really dealing with this issue of fake products, expired products. I mean, in February alone, we saw the EFCC and uh, another agency in charge of, you know, food administration, you know, shut down a couple of factories, both in Lagos and in Abuja, that were producing fake uh, products or that were taking expired products and revalidating the expiry dates. We saw one, they, they uh, basically shut down a factory that was packaging engine oil as honey. You know, taking fake baby products like you earlier mentioned, you know, expired seafood products, you know, I illegally imported from China and selling it back to us in this country. What more can our agencies that regulate food and drugs, you know, do to check these kind of, uh, you know, cases to prevent mass casualties like we're seeing in Kano? Now, um, citizen education is very key because um, one of the core components of uh, monitoring or what I call pharmacovigilance is actually citizen education. Now, as for every product, there must be a label or a number that people can call. You can scratch and call immediately if you have adverse effects. And, in, and the call should go right to where decisions can be taken by the product and by the location. Now, it is really a continuous monitoring whereby markets, supermarkets, Falls need to be surveyed regularly, searching and copy for products like that. The standards in the factory must be inspected regularly, especially the factory that has to do with food and drug production. You have to look at the standards. You have to, you know, ensure that you comply with certification and also standardization. You have to comply with those things. But at our level, because of those key challenges, we need to increase, we need to increase the citizen education. We need to empower the citizen to be able to have a scratch point or a scratch number they can call should they have just experience. And then we, it, what is more important that the education should also include that for every product you buy, read the label, look at the manufacturer date, look at the expired date, and then some of those codes that are on those things, we need to give citizens those kind of education. I expect in Southern Organization of Nigeria and NAPDA to be at the forefront of ensuring that those education are passed to the citizen appropriately. Okay, still talking about you know education regarding pharmacovigilance. We know that consuming expired products and uh, you know fake products like this could increase the risk of cancer. You know, you know. Let us know what other health risk people face when they take and consume products like this. Now, when you, when you talk about drugs, for instance, if the drug is expired, of course, it will not have the desired effect. The side effect will be accentuated depending on the type of the drugs you are using, okay? And the side effect is supposed to produce. Now, um, the toxicity of the drug is increased, you know, because let's face it, drugs are products, they have their own toxic effects. So, um, if a drug can compromise the function of the kidney and it's expired, it's a worse thing that compromise. The most important thing is that you want to consume drugs that should have desired effect on the body and reduce the side effects as much as possible. So the danger is that it can cause more damage to different organs, 
um, and it can actually lead to sudden death and this kind of emergency that we are experiencing. All right, and uh, I also want to ask now about the, you know, I, I keep happening on the healthcare aspect and the setup, you know, that is um, available in Kano State. Um, is this a good time to, you know, look at pr the primary health care uh, facilities that are available in Kano State? And um, can, you know, basic primary health care facilities handle uh, a crisis like this? Uh, do they all need to be in the ICUs? Um, and also, you know, do we also have 100% confirmation that it is just the citric acid that has caused this poisoning? Or is there, is there a combination of uh, other factors that have, may have led to this uh, crisis? Yeah, um, this kind of thing is not handled at the level of primary health care. Um, what we need to do at the level of primary health care is to push for education and help in the epidemiological survey. You know, the epidemiologist will find out the source and the spread. That is key. That is all at the level of primary health care. Okay? But apart from that, this is not something meant for primary health care. Except that at that level, you campaign you educate people, you help, you know, track the flow of those poison, of poisonous products. Now, um, we know that even the current healthcare in Nigeria has its own challenges uh, because, you see, the staffing, the equipment, you know, the basic products that you need to give at that level. In fact, the toxicology is not handled at current healthcare. That means that how do you handle different toxins? Uh, in the body. That is not done at primary health care. Uh, of course, there could be simple home remedy, but, you know, once you get to that level of toxicity at this kind of ep uh, epidemic, it is essential that you move to secondary and tertiary level, and there must be a proper coordination to ensure that um, this thing does not spill over. And then um, it, it speaks a volume to the level of compromise that may probably have happened at the level of monitoring and evaluating the ongoing monitoring and evaluation of those companies that produce those products. Okay, I was asking, you know, about confirmation, 100% confirmation on, uh, you know, the cause of this poison. Now, if it is just citric acid or it is a combination of citric acid and something else uh, that has uh, caused it, you know, at what point are we going to have analysis that should uh, clarify this? You know, it's an ongoing process. Yes. The thing will be clear as, as, as the day goes on. Uh, you, you know, you need a specialized laboratory to do all those toxicology analysis to understand, in fact, what points of citric acid is there, um, what components, other components are there, and then what exactly less to this um, experience. So it's an ongoing thing, but the first thing that is to stop um, the spread of that is to ensure that people don't consume the product, to ensure that the company is to retrieve all the products in every shop and every kiosk in the state, and then educate the people to run away from such products for now. Okay. Well, um, the Kano State Government said they've sent samples of that particular citric, citric acid product, you know, to NAVDAC uh, for them to run tests on that. So w w let's look forward to uh, the, the results of those tests that will be run on the citric acid. Also, Mr. Mebaundu, re closely related to this issue is the challenge of border control and importation. I mean, that's basically where the challenge is, it seems, where, you know, Nigeria has become sort of like a dumping ground where expired products that can't be used in those countries are shipped here. And we have Nigerian businessmen who are eager to take this product and sell it to their fellow citizens. What more can our customs officers be doing to check things like this? Are we, are we looking at corruption now? Because they should know that this product is expired and how does it get filtered into, into our, our, our supermarkets? Indeed, custom um, effect it has to do with which coming to the country. But the NAVDAC people at the border should be able to thoroughly look at the product. Do we have surgery to import this product? Okay. Well, at the point of departure of the product, do they have uh, good manufacturing 
uh, product certificate. There are series of list of things you must have to bring anything to this country. At the level of custom, once they, once they get any product, they should call NAVDA, and that's the normal thing. NAVDA, come and assess this product, whether it is, it is good for people's consumption. But like Riley pointed out, um, pecuniary interest has gained ground too much in the country in such a way that compromise of everything happens. And then, you know, um, this speaks volume to what we hold there, because who are in charge of monitoring and ensuring that the product that is good enters the country and you compromise that. You don't know whether it's your family that's going to consume the product, mm. you know? So, and it, it speaks volume to the fact that you are delaying in your duty. So it is important that beyond the, the, the pharmaceutical company or the company that is that's only for the person of this product, we should query those customs, those NAFTA people that are supposed to follow up and monitor this thing. But you know, in Nigeria, everything is who knows who. And if you're not careful, even the person that imported the product will, will, will be allowed to go scot-free without serious compromise. And then this also points out to the fact that we must arrange some compensation for those families that uh, had the bad effect of after consuming the product. Who is responsible for the payment of the compensation? The company and insurance and even government. Excuse All me. right, Dr. Mabawondo. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I believe it's also very important to you know know if this was locally produced citric acid because you know if it was important then it probably is in other states also. There's Katsina, there's Kaduna, there's mm -hmm. Bauchi, which are neighboring states to Kano. Um, you know, and you know if people already have these things in stores in those states, then you know we might have uh, more of these uh, poisoning uh, cases. But we're out of uh, time. Thank you very much, Dr. Tui Mebawondu, all the way in Jalingo. Thanks for sharing with us this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Uh, we'll move away from poisoning now to talk uh, of something with regards pensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Enugu State Government uh, came under um, criticism. The Enugu State's House of Assembly, I beg your pardon, came under criticism uh, over a uh, bill to give a 900% increment or, or rather um, uh, bonus life pensions to former governors of the state, including the wives of ex-governors of the state. And we're talking about that next here on The Breakfast.